All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Wednesday Night Reviews. I'm your host, Conrad, and I wanted to share with you guys today Heroes in Crisis number two. It was a fantastic issue that I am in love with, uh, and I think you will be too if you haven't already read it. So just so you can see it, there is the wonderful cover drawn by Clayman, uh, and of course the creative team behind this issue, just like the first, is Tom King, Clayman, Tony Moro, uh, Mori, uh, and of course we've added in Crianto this time as well. So the cover itself is very telling throughout the issue. So it's a great cover in that it sits with what we're going to see. It's not just some shot of our heroes or villains. Uh, it actually tells you a lot. So what we see here is Batman basically fighting for his life uh, with the lasso of truth bound around his neck. And of course, we can see Harley in her classic uh, one-piece suit, um, basically with her foot in his neck. And he is getting strangled by it. Which tells us a lot. One, Harley is in control. Two, Batman on the ground, perhaps representing either himself or our Holy Trinity, Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. Uh, and the Lasso of Truth, I think, is the best part uh, as it shows that they're hiding something. And Harley believes that she can get the truth out of Batman. So the opening of this comic is actually a confessional, once again, in the vein of the last issue, uh, but this time with Harley, or sorry, with... Uh, Poison Ivy, but she's interrupted by Harley, uh, and it's quite a cute little scene between herself uh, and Harley, which is a nice little couple scene, um, but it also does show about how, once again, Poison Ivy feels about herself and how she thinks of herself, which is what this is all about. Now, of course, the rest of the issue picks up more or less uh, off the tail end of issue one, so Harley is now on the run from the Trinity. And she meets with various people in an attempt to uh, seek, you know, shelter and everything like that, uh, while the Trinity investigates exactly what happened to all these heroes. And we find out some gruesome details about how they died um, and what happened to them. And my favorite part, of course, uh, throughout is actually the confessionals um, from Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. So previously we had unknown heroes discussing how they felt, what they felt like, uh, how they dealt with trauma and stress and being a hero, going into battle. Uh, and of course, especially the younger ones, they gave us a glimpse into how they cope, their weakness and everything that they used to be able to feel good and like they could be heroes. Now, when we see Batman, for instance, we get him first of them all. He questions himself on the Robins, which is very interesting given, of course, the most recent events in Detective Comics, uh, where we've had one of the Robins once again die, and of course the history of the Robins dying, between Jason Todd, uh, the most recent Tim Drake, and it's just a, it's a nice shot finally of him, of Bruce, letting us know that he's not some unbreakable wall of, I am correct, I know I am correct, my way or the highway, he questions himself, but of course being Batman, he can't let anyone know that until he has this anonymous means, which I think is beautiful. At the same time, uh, it does raise a lot of questions, and I'm sure comic book fans everywhere will have fun debating this, this page alone. Now, the rest of the issue sort of picks up. We see Booster Gold. He's revived from his fight with Harley, and Harley is literally playing cards with penguins. Not mobster penguin, but the animals, penguins. Beautiful. And as the issue carries on, the Trinity tracks her down, and they have quite this fight with her. And of course, uh, she does manage to outwit them. I think my favorite thing of this issue is just how the events in the world develop. Harley appears to be allowing herself to let go of Poison Ivy because she knows what's going on. Uh, and she knows she needs to help somehow. She's feeling bad about herself, uh, especially revolving the Joker. And basically how she shouldn't have let anyone hurt her, which is very interesting, because she has a long history of being abused in the comics, whether it's the Joker, the heroes, just beating her up in general because she's a villain, um, but overall, she's been through a lot as a character. She's probably one of DC's most interesting characters psychologically and relationship-wise. And of course, my favorite panel from the whole comic is on the second last page, the very bottom of the page. It's a great shot of Lois taking off guard by what happens next in the world. Uh, 
and overall I think this issue is fantastic it delves into that emotional and psychological stress that the heroes get which is what it's supposed to do just like Identity Crisis did but in a more close to home way and I absolutely love this issue so please go out pick up Heroes in Crisis number two if Heroes in Crisis in, the, in number three is available get it and if not by all means wait six to nine months and I'm sure we will have a hardcover that you can get, and you'll love it. So once again, Heroes in Crisis number two by Tom King, Clayman, Tony Mori, and in this issue, Prianto.